Hey y'all, it's me, Niecy Lynn. This is the 5th of April, 2024. <clears throat> this is Floss Tube 221. This is a channel about stitching and just my day-to-day -day life. I sometimes have recipes or things like that, but mainly it's about my stitching. The kids have gone back to Florida. They left Sunday morning at three o'clock in the morning, so they got there by three o'clock in the afternoon, so they'd have some time outside uh, with their daddy. So. Um, he had had to be away on work, so it was, um, it's just been, you know, it's quiet. It's quiet this week after they leave. But, um, I went over to see Daddy on Wednesday. They did not do his treatment. His pneumonia is, um, worse in his lungs, so they didn't do his treatment. So, he was kind of sad about that. So, I went over and visited with him because, as you can see in the cover photo, um, I did have a finish this week, and I guess we'll probably start off talking about it in a second. Um, but it was so fun to talk to him, and we were talking about the people, some of the people on the actual stitched piece and things, and the things he remembered of them, and he's going to get some pictures of them out so I can have them in a little, you know, slide envelope on the back so that they'll be in there, and... It just got me thinking about, I am, which I mean, this may shock a lot of y'all or y'all, some of y'all may be in the same boat. I'm the first generation of my people to be born at the hospital. My mama and my daddy were both born to home, you know, so they weren't born at the hospital. And so I was talking to my cousin and her mama was born at the hospital, but not her daddy because her daddy is my mama's older brother. So, um... I'm the first generation of my family not to pick cotton. My other, my mom and her brothers and daddy and them, they all picked cotton. Cotton was still the industry down here then. They were poor, so, you know, they picked cotton. And it was just eye-opening to talk. When I was talking to him, it got my brain going about all those kinds of things. So... If you haven't talked about those things with your kids or your grandkids, um, I would encourage you to delve into that because it's crazy to think about that when you think everybody's born at a hospital or a birthing center or something nowadays, you know. So uh, it was just, it was crazy. But Without further ado, I've been working on C.O. Henderson, 1841. She's by Violets and Verses. She is um, 92 by 167. So she's a good size. She's not giant, um, about seven by 12 or something. I think is what I ended up with, something like that. But it was gorgeous in and of itself. I decided to stitch it for my granny. Um, my daddy's grandma, she was my great granny. I just called her granny. Um, she came from Andalusia, Alabama on a wagon. She was born in 1887 and I knew her. She didn't pass until 1971. And I do have memories of her as a child, um, which I can't imagine. Cause you know, as a grandparent, you give in. Like, you know, you give things to your grandkids like you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't let your kids, right? When the girls are here, if they don't want to eat what we're eating, you know, they want to eat cereal or, you know, whatever they want, you know, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's fine, it's fine. So I can't imagine by the time you get to be a great grandparent, like how lenient you are and how much you realize, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this ain't going to make no difference, right? It don't matter. It's not at all. And so I can remember one one really vivid memory of her I have is whatever they were eating, I didn't want it or it wasn't quite time to eat or whatever. And I wanted some, they always had cornflakes and I still love me a cornflake. I don't buy them very often, but um, I love them. And maybe I just love them because they had them as a kid and I am emotionally attached to cornflakes. But I can remember her saying, oh, Velma, get that baby bowl cereal. You know, and it, it's just, I, that is a very vivid memory of her because she was just like, oh, it's fine. She always ate uh, butter, cornbread in a glass 
with buttermilk poured on it and then she would eat it with a spoon. I remember that as a kid and um, myself not a big fan of the buttermilk or of soggy bread of any sort. So I don't know, but I can remember her eating that of an evening and I don't, I don't know if anybody can chime in on that because it does not just even remotely sound like something I would be interested in. I don't like the taste. I love cornbread, but I don't like no soggy bread. So I can't, I guess in some people's mind, it'd be kind of like grits, but grits ain't, ain't soggy like that. Hey, Patty, what do you do? You wanna say hi, you big fatty? Say hi, fatty. Can you say hi? You wanna come say hi to everybody so Kimmy can see you? You say hi, Kimmy. Kimmy, I'll get my head to show you, Kimmy. Kimmy, show you later. So it, it was very fun to stitch this piece and remember her and think about her. And um, so here she is. I centered my, if you center this flower, you can get both flowers in. On this chart, she, um, the little girl didn't get it centered in the last one is half right there. But if you center that front one and cut off some of your, this right here, you can get them all three in there. So I changed that. Then the boys' names have blue letters and the girls' names are red. And then she was Mary Frances Lynch Horton. And then she was born, I think the 1st of January, yeah, 1887. And she passed the 2nd of June, 1971. So we have, now this one, Daddy at first said, no, his name was Milton. And I said, no, no, that's not what it said. And um, so we had to double check me because then I was in panic mode for real. And then what we realized was that Carl Thomas died when Daddy was three. So this first one right here is Carl Thomas Horton. Daddy never knew him. Daddy didn't have any memory of this one. So that's why he was thinking, because this is Clyde Milton. And he said, oh no, that's supposed to be an M. Because that's who Mike was named after. And I said, oh no. So then I got to panic and I got on my phone, pulled up what I'd got. And then we realized that this one passed when daddy was little, so he never knew him. This is Lester. I, I remembered Lester. Lester was alive when I was alive. This is my grandma, Velma Onis. He's Lester Robert. Then there's poor baby Betty that's still missing out in the mist. We've got some tendrils going out to try to find her. This was Clyde Milton Horton. And this is Howard Donald Horton. Clyde, Daddy said, was his favorite of all time. He served on the, I think the USS Nevada. I've got to get all this to make sure it's right in my brain and get it on the back. Um, he was on the USS Nevada when uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked. I think if I remember what Daddy said, that that's one of, that they beached the ship. And it did, it was, it made it through the Pearl Harbor attack and everything. But um, he said, you know, he said, I can remember Clyde and Patty's trying to knock y'all over. Talking about how scary it was to be, you doing Patty, you can get right there. To be on, you know, out in the water and the kamikaze pilots coming down and stuff. So um, we just had so much fun talking about all this stitching and I loved it. It was such a nice day, such a nice day and so many fun things um, that he remembered that I didn't even know. Um, I have a great, great uncle or something that was a, like a pro baseball player and he was a pitcher and a relief pitcher and um, then after he quit playing, he was in a car wreck and he cut his arm off. It was sitting on the window. You know how you set your arm like this and you drive, well, back when people didn't have no air condition or if you drive a Jeep. 
you know, your arm's always up like this and you're driving, right? Which is me. Um, but he said he came to my Amy's, and if y'all remember, she was the last one I stitched was my Amy, um, came to her house and daddy said, you know, he and my mama were still young and hadn't been married all that long, but he came to visit while they were there and they were all already outside playing baseball. And he said, you know, he came out there and even one-armed, you know, and in his 60s was still doing pretty darn good. And he said, you know, I've always loved that that's something that not many people get to say, you know, as I got to play ball with a pro ball player. And so I had no, I had no idea that they hadn't really known each other much more than just, you know, an acquaintance. I didn't realize that. So that was, that was fun. So even if you, I don't, I just really encourage you to either start an album or something that gets these conversations going. We had so much fun, or I did at least, um, finding out all these things and just getting to sit and visit. And he ran down to the cafe. Um, I asked if he wanted pizza lasagna for lunch and he said no, he really wanted a hamburger. So Annie ran down to the cafe and got us all um, kids meals, which was what we eat. And we sat there and ate our hamburgers and visited and it was just such a good day. So I am so glad to have this finished. I hoped I would have it framed, but this week I just have not had the bandwidth to pay attention enough to um, tackle this. So uh, maybe this afternoon, I'll, I will surely have it framed next week. But I just finished it Monday night maybe. It took a lot of my weekend stitching to get, cause all the over one. So I had to put her date in over one and then I had to graph out this. I didn't, a lot of times y'all know me, I would just fly by the seat of my pants, but I knew I was not gonna have a lot of wiggle room to get all four of her names in there. I don't usually even get to put four names, like with Mammies or, uh, no, Good Old Girls. Good Old Girls, I put Nee Horton, and I hadn't done that on Mammies, and that, I was like, oh, I wish I'd have done that. So I did that on Good Old Girls, who was her daughter. That's Good Old Girl right there. I did that on Mama's, but on this one I had room to put it big. So I knew that I would just have not a lot of extra room though, but I did get it fit in. So I had to graph it out and all, and then here are my initials in 2024. And I had to take the four out because I'd stitched in a three. It's only April. What in the world? Y'all, I was sitting there and had that three half done and looked at it and thought, what are you doing? I don't know. So here she is finished. She's gorgeous. I would recommend this chart to anyone. It's easy to read. It's easy to see. It's big. I really just enjoyed it to pieces. So I will be looking for more um, violets and verses. I know, um, I think Shelly was going to be trying to get one for me. The one that she has out about the violet. Is it grace is the fragrance the violet releases when it's crushed by the heel or something like that? I think it's a twain saying anyway, but I love it. I could not be happier with it. Hopefully I'll have it framed for y'all next week. So that's for my granny. So that is all um, the women in my daddy's family that I, that I remember, you know, before me. <clears throat> I haven't done Howard. Uh, like I said, he died a bachelor. Annie didn't know, Annie, Daddy and I were sitting there talking. Um, you know, he never married. I told y'all that his fiance was murdered. And after that, he never dated or anything. And Annie said she didn't know that. So I was shocked that I had, I had a bit of family knowledge. Annie didn't have, I can't believe, because Annie's real good about remembering who goes with what and who and how. So, gotcha, Annie. I'm not kidding, y'all. She always remembers everything like that. I'm sitting there going, now hold on, how did so-and-so go with so-and-so? And Annie will be like, oh no, so-and-so. And that was their daughter and she'll get me all lined out. And I'm like, oh Lordy. 
She never forgets. I barely remember. So I had a finish this week. So that was good. That was good times to have a finish. So I'll have another, hopefully start on my next family sampler when I talk to y'all next week. But that's my finish on that one. Now let's see who's a whip this week. My Serbian proverb is a whip this week. Uh, my Lottie Da. I nearly forgot to write it down. Be humble for you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. I love that. I think we forget that a lot. I think all of us forget that more than we should. And I have got, I got to get a good little chunk done. Uh, last night I was working on it and I just set it down. So it's kind of, my thread's still hanging. Let's see. If I can get it on the board. I'm loving this. I've wanted to stitch it forever, and I finally just said, you know what, you better get started. Because here's the thing, if I start it eventually, I'll finish it. I'm not one to let them lie, and I usually um, eventually get my mojo right with it and get busy. I can't get frustrated if I make a mistake or something, so I'll set it aside. But usually if I get something started, I'll eventually get it going. So. Here is the first whole uh, little bow there with the bloom on the end. And the second bow is about halfway done. And I think there's eight, eight of them. So, and I've still got to put the two back here. I didn't put those two there yet. So, but I'm loving it. I changed all the colors up to just something that I liked. I wanted it to show up a little bit more and be a little louder, but it is gorgeous. It's on a piece of, what do we have here? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know where my little tag went. I was supposed to have a little tag right there. We're on a piece of something. It looks to be about a 28 count something. I'll have to find my tag is gone missing in the mist. But I do love it. It's fun stitch. Um, it's not a colored chart. The chart is black and white. So it's not quite as easy to see, but it does have a nice uh, rhythm to it. You know, if you can get these going here, that's what I did the other night. I just like this. So you can get a nice rhythm going and then keep on with it. So hopefully next week I might have this one done in this one or this one in this one one. So you can see I'll be progressing. I can't wait to have that one finished. I love that saying. I really, really do. I've, I have loved it forever. So that is Serbian Proverb by Lottie Da. It's mostly the called for DMCs. I switched up one, I think, to a brighter, something to brighten it up a little bit, which y'all know I am prone to do. So what do we got? We got, we got that one. We did, okay, now 4th of July rules is sitting right here somewhere. Let's use this little one. We can see it better. Patty over here getting cat. This is my 4th of July rules. Here again, I was working on it and just left my needle in it when I stopped. It is by Primrose Cottage Stitches, but I did get a little, I mean, I got a decent sized little something done. You can tell I did something. That's what's aggravating is sometimes you think, oh my gosh, I can't even tell I did anything. But you can tell, I can tell. So as long as I can tell I'm making progress, I'm usually pretty happy. I stink and love this. Now, I think she's working on right now cross-stitch rules. So, if I know a lot of y'all had done her hive rules. 
this is the 4th of July rules. Um, fly, oh glory, remember and honor the fallen, go to the parade, watch fireworks, and celebrate our freedom. And it is so cute by Primrose Cottage Stitches. And I hope she does one for every season. I just did Christmas rules too. So she's got Christmas rules, high rules, 4th of July rules, and I think she's working on cross, I think it may not be like cross stitch rules right now. Um, I'm not using the called fours. I may have left my thread over there. I did where I was stitching with it, so. But, oh my gosh, that's upside down. Y'all, I don't know if I need more coffee or less coffee at this point. But obviously, I need something. Lord have mercy. Oh, but I didn't have this little emblem done, and I didn't have any of this done, and the star up there was only started. So I finished the star. I've got the little arrows down there, and I've got the S done, and I started the E, and I did the little quilting star right there. This is on... I don't have my thread over here, so I can't tell you. I told y'all, if y'all could see this table, y'all be praying for me right now because I don't know how I made such a mess bringing stuff in here today. But it looks like a bomb went off down here. There is mess everywhere. Literally everywhere. I don't know what's going on. I got a mess, but it's so cute. It is just so cute. I love the colors. Like I said, I'm not using the call fours, but I'm using similar. I just did a floss toss and did some similar things um, because I wanted them to show up on my fabric. So, and I think everything's showing up fine, but I love it. It has been so fun to, um, I just, y'all know I don't mind. I don't like gathering and supplies and figuring out my starting point and cutting my fabric. And those are the things that I can live without. Yes, I could just, I should just buy kits probably. Um, I know, or have, have them kitted up, which I do sometimes. Um, it, but that's much better for me. If I just have them kitted up and send it on to me and I can go down from there because the measuring and the cutting and the doing the edge is, is my least favorite. I just like the stitching and then I like, I'm not crazy about the finishing, but I do the finishing so I can have it displayed. I am also gonna leave up my Easter longer because Easter was just like that because it's so early this year. And so I'm just leaving my Easter up longer. I'll, I'll probably leave it up all through spring, quite honestly. Usually I take down the things that specifically say Easter or have Easter eggs or whatever. I'm not this year. I'm leaving it up. I love it and I'm leaving it up. So for what it's worth, that's where I'm at. Fourth of July rules. Got some love this week and it is so cute. I can't wait to see what else she comes out with. And I'll have a, you know, I have my Christmas one that I did. Then I have 4th of July. So really, I just need her to do a, um, a spring and a fall one, okay? Lindsay, if you're listening, and, you know, and, and your only thought in life is, wonder what I could, wonder what I could design that would really just make Nisi stay. Well, there you go. I know that's what it is, too. I just, I need a fall rules and I need a um, spring rules, okay? Oh, here we go. Look, I told you I was right here. That, that's 32 count espresso Lugana from Fiber on a Whim. I, when I picked up the project bag, the thread was under it. So that little light blue that wasn't on there last week is Anchor 1033, which is to me the same as DMC 932, but that little light blue is that color and it's so pretty. So that one has been fun. Okay, who else do we have here? 
a big old mess here, that's for sure. Give thanks. I'm gonna pull it out. This is Give Thanks by um, Hands On Design. It calls for Jack's Room. I didn't have that and didn't bother to buy a piece. I just dyed it and made it. It looks to be pretty close to the picture. I'll show y'all. It's close enough for me anyway. So I got, that's what the cover photo is. And that's the piece I dyed. So I feel like I'm close enough for government work at least. Um, I got my thanks all done and then I've started on the little humpity things under there. Now, their little humpity thing is a different color, isn't it? What have I done? This is what happens when you stitch too late. Why did I think that was white? Because I, I don't know, I've been drinking. I don't know, and I ain't been. I don't even have that as an excuse anymore. Good gravy. This is why I have to come to y'all. So, my thanks is done, and the white under my thanks is supposed to be tan. So, shall I pick out that white or just leave it? It's probably going to get left. Let's be honest. Um, hmm. Yeah. That's no way now. I don't like that really being that, that tannish color. I, would, I don't know. So I don't know what I would have put there instead. Maybe an orange, but we'll see. We'll do something. But it's cute. I love the way the fabric turned out. I love the um blue on there the blue and that mustard color together is just so pretty to me i love that so i did work on it a little bit <clears throat> got a little bit of action on it but like i said this is a good this is a reason it's a good thing for me to come to y'all because if not i'd have been sitting here thinking that was supposed to be white the whole time the blue i'm using is blueberry heel by wicked stepmother and it is gorgeous the off-white is Love Letters in the Sand by Wicked Stepmother. I'm loving those. Y'all know I do. And I love I, I love my colors by Frankie and Rhonda. She's been resting up right now. I'm not feeling so great. So um, send all the good prayers and juju to Frankie so she can get feeling better. But I got a little bit done on that. And so it's there's just that and then the little... Um, Thanksgiving little fall angel is the only other fall pieces I have left from my whole bag full of fall things that I wanted to stitch. So maybe that's something that works out good for me. If I just get fabrics ready and get things in and um, ready to go, and then I can just snap it up and keep on stitching. Now let's see here. I thought I had a, oh. Patty is killing it. I'm fixing to show y'all Lucy V. Moore. Patty is killing it on her Lucy V. Moore. But we were talking about stitching and stitching all the time. And this came up in my time hop. Not like that. That's, my, my, that's Mimi with the girls. But, which was another cute picture. But you can see I cross-stitched her little onesie with waist canvas. That was her very first Easter that we had her. My sweet girl. And now here she is. There's all my girls with Mimi. We went by to see Mama um, Friday after I filmed and we uploaded and everything. We went by to see her. She was happy to see the girls and the girls were happy to see her. So that was a, a nice quick little visit. And then I got Catchy a looking fine book for Easter. So they're all doing their looking fine with him, which he loves to do those things. But I thought, oh, 
It's Luther's birthday this week. One of my grand dogs. Look at that face. How could you not love it? He's eight. He will be a nine on her birthday. Luther's eight on his birthday. So we just, we had all the fun. We made their little Easter cars and we just had so much fun. This will show y'all how the wind is blowing here. Look at the wind. Nearly blowing my babies off their scooters. Look at that. It's crazy how high the wind is blowing. Patty, I don't see it. Okay. I thought I had a picture of Patty's Lucy B. Moore, but I can't find it in all my, all my mess. This is Lucy B. Moore. I think she's by Needlework Press and RSG Antiques. There we go. She's large. She's long, I guess, this thing. So pretty. I can't wait to stitch her. Now, Patty has already done, she's already down here in this little tiny alphabet. Like, she killing it. She hasn't done this one yet. We're supposed to zoom this weekend and go over like the four-sided stitch and stuff. And um, she did these in Smyrna's, which I think I'm gonna do mine in Smyrna's. This 30 count straw, I tried an eyelet and it really is a big weave. I'm afraid I'm gonna be all distorted if I do that many eyelets. So I think I'm gonna go with, with the Smyrna's also. Um, I've decided I'm gonna do this one because I can put my mama, my daddy, my sister and myself right here. So I can do this one for my growing up family and that we can all be on there. So I just barely started my little A here. These are the call for colors that I just, I decided to try to use, make myself use the call fours. Cause this, I mean, this is gorgeous. Let's not joke around here. This thing is so pretty. And I thought, you know what, just use your call fours. And now it calls for, it says they used one strand. Um, I, I don't know, I can't do one strand on 30. I can't. That's not enough coverage for me. Um, there are things I can do and things I can't do. That's, uh, that's one of the can'ts. So I just got, I've got, you know, my corner piece started there and then just a very little start on my A. I worked on it just a little bit after I finished my C.O. Henderson. I just picked it up and did some on the border and the A that night before we went to bed and set it down. I haven't picked it back up yet, but I will hopefully this week make some more progress and get it, at least my alphabet done. I would like to get my big, my big alphabet finished. If I don't, which it's fine. But it is so pretty. It's on a piece of 30 count straw. I just use the call fours. Um, now it gives you two options in here. Let's see if I can do it like this. Yeah, you can't see the chart if I go this way. It gives you two options because the one, the original had what looked like silk and wool in it. So they give you that option. I just did the cotton option. I just did the cotton thread option. It tells you to get, you know, that some of them you'll need two skeins, two skeins, you know, like this. So <clears throat> that's what I did. That's what I just went ahead and ordered to have it here and if I, have to get more I will the only place that the only thing that actually touches is your border all the way around is the only thing that's just still the same everywhere so so even if you ran out and had to order mid the only thing that might be affected would be to me this border anything else I could I'd know ahead of time oh wait I'm not gonna have enough and it's touching you know so but I think it's so pretty. There's the back side of it. The front end, I guess that's the front end. And then this is actually on the back, the front of the chart that's on the back. 
And then down here, you can see what was left of the original, how it looked when they found it. And I just think it's so pretty. So I can't wait to get it done. And like I said, that'll let me get daddy and mama and myself and sister all on one and so that like you know that generation one that one for mama will be done and um it'll have sister and i on there so i just think this will work best work best for that so that makes me happy to have gotten such a really 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 good start on that one um and Lori Miller was so sweet. I want to see if I can grab these. I put them over here so I can reach them. She was so sweet. Thanks for showing these. These, like I said, these are her little um, thread milk design caps that you that they're chipboard. They're like not um, like when I just cut I cut up a card or something to make floss drops out of. But this is like I don't know if you can see. It's like twice that thick, and has just the cutest little you know, like milk jug things on top. It's adorable. And then of course on the back, you know, you can put what the thread is. So um, she was so sweet to say, thanks for showing it. It is gorgeous. It's beautifully made. It has uh, these little, there we go. If I do it like that, maybe you can see it. It has her little charm on there and some little bling that is so, so sweet. So um, I, I just thought it was so cute and I thought it was so sweet of her to send a, to say thank you in the messages for showing that. Um, and Charles, all y'all that talked about how precious Aria was talking about her mermaid. I'm telling y'all, she has got that kind of an engineer planning brain. She will get her a plan and she will execute it. Now she did, she decided to leave her mermaid here and let it, the clay be getting dry while she's gone and then she'll finish her face and stuff when she comes back. So, she decided not to carry her home with her to finish her when she comes back in seven weeks, which we're all already looking forward to and making making big plans. They, um, I've talked to them several times this week. They'll text or call or whatever because they can, um, you know, on their little iPads. Their mama has it set up where they can just, you know, talk to my parents and myself and James Williams and like this so they can, you know, visit and talk to us and all. So that's so nice. So I've talked to them several times this week. They've been getting back to their schooling and all. And I got some happy mail here. I was shocked I got my first birthday present in the mail. Uh, my birthday's on the 17th. And so I was like, oh, Lord, I hadn't even thought about it. So... That's coming up, gonna be another day newer, right? And then of course this weekend we have, I'll show you it in just a second. I'm, I gotta get my clips back on here. I, I have such a mess. I'm gonna try to clean up one little tiny, tiny portion of my mess here while we're talking, at least put the clips back on these boards. Um, you know, we have the Eclipse here and I'm in the path of the total premium, primo, whatever. 99% of hotel rooms in Dallas are taken up from people coming from somewhere to see this eclipse. Now, I am going to see the eclipse. I have my eclipse glasses. I am prepared. Um, I will say, all of y'all, anybody that has kids or grandkids that are watching, please look up how to use a, like a paper plate or something because little kids don't understand that they're not supposed to peek up, you know, they're not gonna fit them right anyway, right? that they're not supposed to look up and look around the edges and they really could severely damage their eyes. So you want to make it where they can't peek around those glasses. So let's say these are, let's say these are my paper plate and these are my little glasses. Okay, these are my glasses. We're gonna take this and we're going to cut out of the paper plate where the little holes are that I'm gonna look through, right? And then we're gonna cut out a place here and here for the ear pieces, little slits for the ear pieces to go through. And then you're gonna take your paper plate and you're gonna cut out like this, a V, 
so that it can go like this down under their face and out and around like this. And the little glasses are just gonna sit here on top and go through the slit you made to go over here. And then you just cut out the space where the film is, right? So they can still see, but they can't look around. You can let them color the paper plate to look like a sun or whatever, you know? I mean, and I get it, it's a big deal, but please be mindful of that. If you are having your kids or your grandkids, letting them look at it with the glasses on, right? Just please be careful. But all the hotel rooms in Dallas, they're like 99% of the hotel rooms in Dallas are booked out. Now y'all, I love me some Dallas and Fort Worth. I do. But just like any big city, there are some nasty, nasty hotels. There are nasty hotels in every big city, probably in small places too. There's nasty hotels. 99%. Well, you know the nasty ones ain't just the 1%. So I hope all these people that came here to see this don't just go home with the memories of their eclipse experience. I hope they don't take bed bugs and all other kind of cooties home with them because they just had to come see it and stay in a nasty hotel. I, I can't, I just cannot. They say there'll be people camping. I haven't seen anything yet, but they say they're supposed to start arriving tomorrow. We're supposed to have an influx of like 200,000 people. Now y'all, I am not going nowhere. I'm not going five miles to see something that lasts four minutes. We're supposed to have like four minutes and 14 seconds of totality or something. I ain't going five miles to see something that lasts four minutes. Some of y'all done come from kingdom come and you're going to come here. I can't. I can't. They said people be prepared. People be camping on the sidewalks. No, they're not. They're not camping on my sidewalk. If you think I ain't going to be out there shooting you off like a stray dog, get on out of here. You are wrong. You are wrong. I love people as much as anybody, but I don't want you in my yard. I don't want you on the sidewalk. Don't think you're gonna throw your tent on my driveway. It's not gonna happen, Captain. Not gonna happen. So, um, if next week my daughter and my or my children are on here asking for bail money, <laughs> y'all know that I done got sideways with one of the solar eclipse folks, and I gone to jail because no. No, they told the people in the downtown merchants association to have days worth of food and water and clothes down there with them because they might not be able to get out because there might be people camped solid and you couldn't move cars or nothing. No, 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 no. If you think I ain't going to get up there and snatch your tent up and move it. And they said, well, you know, there'd be too many people for the police to come do anything. I don't need the police to snatch your tin up out of my road. So if you're coming and this happens to get to you, don't be blocking nobody's driveways. Don't be blocking no streets. Just because you ain't got no sense and you come here to see four minutes worth of something, don't mean you can ruin my entire existence for four or five, six days. You could watch it on the news. So that's me being hateful. That's my hateful thing. But next week, y'all will know if Mike is on here going, well, y'all, mama won't be here this week because she down to the jailhouse. Y'all will know. Yeah, it happens. It happened. Y'all, I'm, I'm concerned. They said when it's happened in other places before and it's not as big a deal, it wasn't even as total as this, that they was out of food and gas for four days because the swarm of locusts done come through. Nope. Uh-uh. Okay. This was my package on the doorstep yesterday evening that I did not know was coming. It's from Diane. She sent me this adorable card. 
When you're so fabulous, it's not a hot flash. It's a hot flash. How adorable is that? And she wrote this adorable long note on the inside. And um, <clears throat> it was so sweet. And, and I'll get back with you on it, Diane, also. And she sent me um, these two charts. And now, one of these I had seen, and one of these I don't think I've seen, which here again, happens to me all the time and I don't understand, because I feel like I lurk on Primrose Cottage all the time. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, don't you, you feel like there's people that you lurk on all the time, like their social media, like I feel like I'm on it. I want I check it, you know, I see it, I, it's, you know. So I have seen this one and I love it. It is not in my stash, so I'm excited and hopefully we'll have it stitched by 4th of July. So cute. This is Christmas Alphabet. And of course I could have seen it and just forgot it, but I don't think I have. How is that possible? I tell y'all time and time again, I do not know as much as I look at cross stitch, how this happens. How cute is that? And then she sent me this and she's laughing about her container and I thought she was genius. She cut off a piece of paper towel roll and made it into a little box to keep it from getting smashed, you know, because things get smashed in the mail. Because I've wrapped things before, but I wished, oh, I wish I had something sturdier, you know. But that's a genius idea because it keeps it from getting crushed because she had wrapped it also. But, you know, that's just not a lot. So I thought she was genius. She thought it was funny. She said, uh, pardon my fancy container, but I thought your fancy container was genius, Diane. But look at this. This is the cutest thing. Look at that little tiny arc. Two by two. I love it. I love, 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 love it. And she has the distinction of my first birthday. So, I got my first birthday gift this year. Oh, I lied. Michael went ahead and gave me my sweat. Uh, she got me a, like a long, uh, like kind of like a long kimono-y thing. It's beautiful. But she did give it to me right before she left. That's right. I asked her if I had to wait and she said, no, go ahead and own it open it so I can see it. So thank you so much, Diane. I loved it and it was such a nice surprise yesterday evening when I got home from school and I was whooped. The kids yesterday, it was picture day. So it was crazy time, you know, anyway. And they were all wound up and wound out and oh, it was wild. And they were exhausted. You could tell they were exhausted and I'm sure it's just from the extra festivities and get togethers and things through Easter, right? But I told Brittany, I said, you don't reckon their parents be letting them eat their Easter candy for breakfast, do you? Because they came in, you know, just wired up. And we didn't, our play time, our play outside time was before our picture time. So we didn't want to let them play outside and get wrecked, right? Because, you know, their mamas had fixed their little hair so beautiful and they had on little smocked dresses and one of the little girls had on a little madras plaid dress that had been her mama's and so her mama had a picture in it and so she was having her picture made in it and it was the sweetest thing the little boys they came in with their little top siders on and their little shorts or some of them had on shorts some of them had on like khakis and their little, um, like, you know, golf shirts. And their little polos. They were little Vineyard Vines shirts and everything. They looked like little college men. They were so cute. And so we didn't want to wreck them, right? So we just did, during their outside playtime, we just got out magnet tiles and Duplos and magnetic cubes and the tool sets with the tool benches, you know, the play tools. And so to try to let, so they could get some play but they didn't get wrecked, you know, outside. And then we went on a scavenger hunt around the hallway and all, and did all kind of crazy walks and stomps, you know, trying to keep them from getting too bored because they didn't get to play outside, but still trying to keep them not looking like wild children. Because let me tell you, the way the wind blows here, sometimes when we come in from the playground, they literally look like we just pulled them out of the literally the furthest depths of the Amazon jungle. 
their hair, you know, is just everywhere and it'll have little, you know, they rolled around on the ground and we have like AstroTurf down, but you know, still the crepe myrtles and stuff drop little seeds and little leaves and all. there'll be stuff stuck on them. You know, it's like, oh my gosh. Oh, some, I wonder something. So, you know, we're trying to brush them off and, you know, clean them up before we go in and everything. And then we go straight and wash their hands and stuff, but they get wild. And so we're trying to keep them looking nice for them pictures for their parents. Cause they were so cute. Y'all, they were so cute. You just forget how fast your little bitty kid goes to be in, you know, like an adult so fast. So it was so fun yesterday. We had all the fun. But, oh, before I forget, Joycey says she has an eight-week-old beagle puppy that's taken up all her time named Hunter. Um, Susu and Chris have a beagle named Sadie, and she is a sweet baby. But, yes, any kind of eight-week-old puppy will take up a lot of your stitching time. You're taking a lot of time walking outside, potty, and all this. Um, and Gwen uh, said, sew a piece of fabric onto my autumn piece down there that I have not touched. It's just still sitting there staring at me. But BJ said that Amy Love Toads put a border on hers. So that's an idea too. I could put, you know, I could sew a border onto it. Uh, Jenny Dawn said fray the edges and then just finish it onto the board, which that would work too. So I appreciate that, y'all. I'm, I'm just letting it roll around in there and try to decide what to do. Uh, Terry said those buttons, those Halloween buttons she thought were from Ghoul School by Glendon Place. So I'm going to go look at that. And then this was the best. Audrey you know, our Audrey is from Northern Ireland. And she said when she was a kid, I mean, we always boiled eggs and then colored them. But she said they went and picked a little prickly bush that was yellow called Wins. And I'm probably saying it wrong, but it looks like Wins to me, not Wines. But anyway, um, and then they boiled that with the eggs. And so the eggs were yellow already. And then they painted, you know, whatever you wanted, your little designs on there and all. But I love that, that they had a little, they have a little, like a little, I guess kind of, we would think of a herb or a, you know, like if you boiled something with, with some, you know, poke salad or something, it'd be green like this. So I love that. So thank you for that, Audrey. That was, um, I'd never thought about that. I loved it. Love, love, loved it. So I think that is about all I have this week. Shares from last week. Let's see if I can find. I've got... Well, one that I'm an idiot and I forgot to draw, evidently. I don't know why I just wrote down three of the four, so I'll have to do one more. So Autumn Spice will be announced next week because there's something wrong with my brain. Oh, Lord. Um, delicious, Mr. and Miss Delicious. Go to Cheryl, and Cheryl, I hope I don't, Cheryl Fuino, F-U-I-N-O, 7901. Cheryl Fuino, 7901. I love this chart. I hope you love it as much as I did. Um, chocolate bunnies. It's so cute. Goes to Flower Lass. This is with Anil and Thread. Flower Lass. Flower Lass. F L O W E R L A S S. And then, oh no, I did. Okay, that just, here it is. I just wrote it down at the bottom instead. I have Autumn Spice written in two places for some reason. Sheila Smith. 3977. Sheila Smith 3977. So those are the shares from last week. Um, I did not get anything mailed this week. I decided um, since it was supposed to be insane, I am just, I didn't, wasn't even going to try to put anything in the mail until after the, all the people leave next week. So next, all the mail from this week is not done yet because. I ain't trying to get my postman to have to get out on the street. This week's shares will be, flip the page back over. Y'all know if I don't keep on myself, I'll mess it up. Okay, C.O. Henderson. Use the word sampler, S-A-M-P-L-E-R. You know, that's my one I just finished. I don't know why I put it back in the bag when I knew I was gonna share it today. Seal Henderson, if you're interested in Seal Henderson, use the word sampler. 
Let me know if you stitch, if you've ever stitched a sampler, if this will be the first time. And then I had a few that I ended up knowing I had several of. So this one um, I've stitched, I finished it last week. It's gorgeous, but I thought I'd already given that one away, but I must have had two in my stash. So this is by Threadworks Primitive. It is ever so grateful. Use the word grateful. Tell me something you're grateful for. Y'all know I keep a gratitude journal every day. I write down three things I'm grateful for. Um, this one, this is Winter Blessings. It is so beautiful, I ended up with two. Use the word blessing. Yes. So use the word blessing. And then here's another one that I realized I ended up with too. Blue Ribbons Designs. This is called Halloween with a Y. It's so cute. Use the word Halloween. Let me know if you've started any Halloween fall stitching yet. So Halloween with a Y and it has all those little, it would make the cutest drum in the world which is the reason it's in my stash, but it still has not got stitched. So I ended up with two, so here it goes. So those will be the shares from this week. Uh, we're still under an hour, so I feel like I made it. Yes. I am going to jump off here. I'm gonna work on my back porch, which is filthy, and scrub the pool, and um, hopefully get some stitching done. Y'all have a happy Friday and a great weekend. And if you're anywhere where you can see the clips, watch it on Monday with your glasses or your welding helmet or your cell phone and enjoy your stitches. Bye.